Whether some people want to admit it or not, Thanksgiving is one great day to look forward to. My favorite holiday has always been a day of thanks, but starting a day with a fun parade is a day I hold in the highest regard. Combining many joys, the familiar and the new, the Macy's Parade is not only a celebration of great characters, but sometimes of very cool people as well. But of course, this is only how the celebration begins. I should hope that everybody's favorite part is this one, the feasting. A crazy culinary schedule can be an exhausting one, but I assure you, it can also be a fun one, a huge hit. And this is one particular day where one certain dish definitely seems to shine. I've been brining my turkeys ever since I roasted my very first one. It's how I find I get my perfect flavor, juiciness, and it's a no-fail way to get folks to feast on it. It's brining time. In a large stock pot, take two tablespoons of sea salt and three quarters of a cup of kosher salt, a quarter cup of black peppercorns and half a cup of dark brown sugar. Adding a little bit of maple syrup, just a little for the flavoring. A little bit of garlic powder, pinch, a little pinch of uh, dried thyme leaves. We're gonna add a little ground allspice. It sounds a little funky, but trust me, the flavor's all gonna be there. Just gotta let it all go together. Add about 15 cloves. We're gonna add a little something, something for you, something for me. We're gonna add a little Coca-Cola. Acts as a really good tenderizer and uh, gives a little sweetness. Now we're gonna add in some good bay leaves uh, to even out the flavor. And get a little bit of paprika in there, last minute flair. A little bit of freshness, some fresh cloves of garlic. About maybe half an onion. And now we gotta get some water. And since our bird's going in here, we're just gonna add it just enough so that uh, it doesn't overflow. If you got a frozen turkey, it's definitely gonna defrost and you're gonna be crying in the morning. So just make sure it's filled up enough. Put the stock on a high heat and let it come to a boil. This is gonna be for about 12 to 14 pounds of turkey. Turn off the heat and once your brine is cooled for about 20 minutes, carefully add in your frozen turkey. Now we're gonna do something to cool it down and for more flavor for our turkey, a little sparkling cider. Calm down then. A little over there, let it tenderize. For the rest of it, you're just gonna cap it and we're gonna save the rest of it for our glaze. Gonna get it a nice cover up. Get a little room to breathe, a little loosely with the foil. Cover your turkey and let it sit and rest for about seven hours or overnight. Before you begin roasting, make sure your oven racks are positioned to fit the turkey. Preheat your oven to 450 degrees, and while you're waiting for it to heat up, it's time to dry off the turkey. Line your roasting pan with paper towels and remove the turkey from the brine and lay it on top of the paper towels, breast side down. Make sure to pat your turkey dry all over with the paper towels and reserve the giblets and neck. Remove the paper towels and proceed to roast your turkey breast side down for about 30 minutes. When 30 minutes are over, Lower the heat to 325 degrees and proceed to carefully flip your bird over. With the juices now cooking throughout the bird, cook it low and slow for the rest of the time needed. In the last hour of cooking, take your reserved neck and giblets and let them cook in the pan alongside the turkey. And then prepare to make your glaze. In a small boiling pot over medium heat, add in two tablespoons of olive oil a quarter cup of agave nectar. And remember that cider I told you to save? Save the rest of it for our glaze. Well, add in about a quarter cup of cider with half a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Add in a quarter cup of good maple syrup, a dash of kosher salt, and a good dash of black pepper. Stir and let it come to a boil. For its remaining 30 minutes in the oven, make sure you put your glaze all over your turkey, assuring that it gets into the nooks and crannies and all over the skin. Close your oven door and let the turkey continue roasting. 
After about 15 minutes, open the oven door again and proceed to baste your turkey once with its drippings. Let the turkey continue roasting in the oven for another 15 minutes until it's ready to come out. When your turkey's done, shut off the heat and take out the turkey to rest. Set it on top of a safe surface and cover the turkey in an aluminum foil, letting it rest for at least 20 minutes so it can redistribute its juices. And when it's ready, carve it however you'd like. I usually like to let the meat soak in the juices overnight, just to heat it up the next day and make it extra delicious. Sneak! And to make gravy, completely simple. Take the drippings from the turkey into a separate pan and whisk together with a tablespoon of flour. A big roast turkey is a jewel to feed a big family, but if you're looking to cook for a smaller bunch, here's another delicious recipe and its veggie alternative and two quick tutorials. Whatever you choose for your main course this Thanksgiving, hopefully there is good company to help you feast. <laughs> Yay! And remember, we're just getting started here. There is much more ahead and much more to feast on. Oh, <laughs> 